This is dubious code going over list comprehensions in Python. So lists, you know, use lists all the time. You might have a standard list. Um, list one equals, and then square, square brackets, one, two, three, four, four, five. Um, so this is a standard way of starting lists. And then um, if I want to do something with the list, I might go for, uh, x and list plus one print x and this is used this is operating on a list with a for loop there's something called a list comprehension in python that uh, will collapse a lot of the for loops into one into one single line although you wouldn't usually print with it so let me show you what list comprehension is so let's say i have um i have a list and I wanted to make another list that is the squares of this list. So I could go list um, two equals an empty list and say for x in list one, list two dot append x, x, x times x. And then print list two. And I can see that I have the squares. This would be a typical way of doing it with a for loop. But a list comprehension lets me collapse these three lines and sometimes more than three lines into a single line. And so um, I basically am doing the same thing. I have a, a part with the for and I have a part where I'm operating on it. So I say my element is x for x in list one. So this for x in list one is this and then x I can do something with this x and I will go x times x and you'll see that this is matches this part matches that part and this is a list comprehension so I've collapsed these three lines into a single line and if I run this you know you get the same result and there's three parts to a list comprehension you need at least two of them one is the for loop so this doesn't have to be you know, part of a list, it's any iterable. So for y in range, you know, five to nine by two, I could do something like that, or five to 11 by two. But that didn't define x, so it has to be for x in range. See, I can't operate on x because I didn't define it, I defined y, so now I can, now it should work. Um, so I have one, the first part is what's actually going to go in the list. The second part is the for loop. And the third part is um, an if statement. So I can say for x, x squared, for x in range, this range, if x equals x divided by five equals zero. I think I can probably put this in parentheses. I'm not 100% sure. So if x mod five is zero, put that in there. This would be equivalent to saying, this uh, list comprehension is equivalent to this for x in the range five, 11, two, if, x mod five equals zero, list three dot append x squared. These two things should be the same. And here we see we've collapsed these four lines for the list in a loop with an if statement into a single uh, one line list comprehension. Let's see if that works. Yep. And we can see of these, the 25 is the only one that is mod five, but you know, I guess if I go up to 17, then 15 by 15 should also be one. So I should get the 15 squared. Although that didn't work, so what screwed up there? Oh, I didn't change that to 17. Um, so there's three things. There's the element, there is the for loop, and there's an if statement. 
Now the for loop could be multiple for loops. So let's say I have list one equals one, two, three, and list two equals A, B, C. And let's say I wanted to uh, pair these all together and say for num in list one, for letter in list two, list three equals uh, list three equals uh, num a tuple list three dot append and I'll append a tuple of num and letter. So here I have two for loops. This is, of course, not the list comprehension. This is the traditional way of just doing it with for loops. And I'll get, you know, nine elements. Three dot pinned, and I'll pin the tuple. You know, I get the nine elements of all the tuples paired together. I could do the same thing in a for loop. I could say list three equals a b let's just make it exactly the same num letter and which one goes first for num in list one for letter in list two and we'll make this list four and we'll print list And here's something I'm not sure. So is this going to be, these for loops going to be reversed? If these for loops are the same order, then we'll see these two lists be the same. If they're reversed, then we'll see them in a different order. Yeah, 1a, 1b, 1c, 2a, 2b, 2c. So these for loops are in the same order as you would write them if you were doing it uh, as if they are as nested for statements. Let's see. You know, you can do a lot of stuff with this. Uh, I could probably use it to unravel. Let's say I had a list of uh, listed lists. So let's say this was one, two, three, four, five, six, and So for inner list in list one, for x in inner list, and we should see this be a um, we should see this denest, and so I think we'll get a list of just one, two, three, four, five, six, maybe. Yeah, so we denested it uh, one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, if you want, yeah. But there's a lot of uses for list comprehensions. List comprehensions. Just play around with it and see what you get. This is dubious code. Uh, thank you for watching.